good afternoon or evening, depending on where you are in the world when you're watching this. Welcome to another vlog. Uh, I'm here again at the 10 Mile Creek track. Uh, I've come here again for a few reasons. Firstly, I guess for a bit of redemption because if you've watched the last vlog, you'll know that the last time I was here, I had a, a bit of a mishap with the video recording and so I was um, not recording when I thought I was and I was recording when I thought I wasn't and I got a whole bunch of footage that I couldn't use so I've come back uh, for a second time in a row to kind of get that right and um, record another vlog from the same area although I'm not going to be shooting in the same place uh, that's another reason why I've come back the first time I didn't make it very far into the track because of the vlogging that I was doing and I was concentrating really on shooting the creek but this time I want to go a little further and actually get to the abandoned processing plant that's here. Ten Mile Creek is an old coal mining area it was coal mined in about the 1950s to the 1980s so it hasn't been used for about 30 odd years and so some of the buildings and some of the um, equipment that we used uh, is just left lying around to, to rot and it obviously makes a very interesting subject. So I've come a little further this time and I'm going to capture all those old abandoned buildings and some of the outworkings and um, concentrate on that rather than the creek this time. I'm also going to be mixing it up today in terms of the kit that I'm using. I own a few kits, digital and film, but the camera that I love the most, I guess the camera that if push came to shove and I was asked to get rid of all of my other gear and just keep one camera, what would that camera be? Well, it would be this, my Bronica ETRS, my medium format 645 Bronica film system. It's just an amazing camera. It's a lovely camera to use, um, to hold with the speed grip attached there, with the prism finder there, uh, with the detachable backs so that you can have different films on the go. You can be shooting black and white, you can be shooting colour. Uh, it, it gives you that flexibility that you don't normally have otherwise. It's got gorgeous prime lenses with it. Uh, I have three lenses for this system. I've got a, a 40mm wide angle which roughly equates to about 24mm uh, in normal digital terms if you're using a um, digital SLR in full frame. I've also got a standard 75mm which I've got on the front at the moment which again equates roughly to a, a 50mm prime, 45 to 50 and I've also got a 200mm telephoto, which is around 125, 130mm equivalent in full frame uh, digital SLR terms. So I've got a good spread from wide angle to telephoto, and the lenses are beautiful. The, the rendition is gorgeous with the, the larger uh, area of the medium format it's about 2.7 almost three times larger than 35 mil and what that means is that not only does it give me more resolution but uh, it gives me uh, bigger bokeh in terms of um, creamier smoother backgrounds if I'm shooting wide open so uh, an f11 on this camera equates to about an f8 on a um, full frame digital SLR so at 1 point or at 2.8 which this lens goes down to um, the bokeh and the, the depth of field is just gorgeous for portraiture and for landscapes if I have it on f11 f16 I'm getting that crisp front to back sharpness so this is the camera that I would keep above all of my others if I was asked to get rid of all my cameras bar one this would be the camera that I would keep.
Okay, well, for my first shot, um, I haven't actually moved very far from where I was uh, setting up. I've actually just moved over to the right a bit so that I can get um, the abandoned building in that uh, very large circular um, tubular construct there in the foreground. So I'm set up here on the um, Bronica shooting at f11 at about a quarter of a second and so I'll take that and we'll have a look and see what we've got. I'm also going to take another one of that uh, at a slightly different angle. I'm still really enjoying the, the large structure and the, um, the tubular, um, I don't know what it is, a scree device that would, I don't know, pick out the larger lumps of coal. I, I don't know what it's for, but uh, it's um, still making a really nice composition. For those of you who may not have shot film before, or, or certainly may not have shot medium format film, um, I'll show you over the Bronica. Uh, it, it's a, as I said earlier, it's a lovely system. It's a modular system, so you, you get um, the body itself, and then you can change out the top plates. You can have a, a metered prism like I've got, or you can have just simply a, a viewing screen where you just look waist level finder you look down into it that, that kind of classic um, medium format uh, sort of roly flex or Hasselblad sort of look you also have as I mentioned earlier the interchangeable backs so that you can swap out film halfway through a roll or ev every shot and obviously the front where um, you attach the lens also I'm, I'm shooting full manual, so the shutter speeds on this camera go up to a 500th of a second. Um, and I've also got um, my cable release in there so that um, I don't touch the camera um, because I'm, I'm using fairly slowish shutter speeds because of the uh, fairly large apertures. Um, small apertures, f11, f16, large numbers. And also, you've got to be aware that um, because these backs come off, they have a, a little um, slide that you take out. You have to remember to take that slide out when you want to take a photo, otherwise the shutter won't release. And you also then have to remember to put the slide back if you want to take the film back off, because if you don't put the slide back, then the back won't release. So it's a very fail-safe system. Uh, and you've just got to have somewhere to um, put the slide, put it in my pocket. Hasselblads, I think, have a system where you can attach the slide to the back, which is quite a nice system. It's unfortunate that the Bronicas don't do that, but, you know, I've got pockets. I just put it in my pocket. So, once you've got your exposure worked out, you manually set your shutter speed, um, you've manually set your aperture, taken the dark slide out, then you can either press the shutter release um, on the front of the camera or um, on the top here of the power winder or with the cable release and I'm using the cable release because I'm shooting at about a fourth of a second quarter of a second so here we go shot number two done For my next image of this old water tower type structure with the path leading off into um, the track, I've closed down even further to F16 because I want front to back sharpness as much as possible. So that's um, stopped me down even more to a half a second exposure. And so um, once again, cable release will come in handy for that. I should also mention that because it's uh, medium format, 645, it takes 120 roll film and on the Bronica you get about 15, 16 shots a roll. So not too many, but better than if you were shooting uh, a 67 uh, that um, only gives you about 10 shots a roll I think. So 15-16 shots gives you enough to cover a, a couple of subjects quite decently I guess and um, 
then it's just simply a matter of popping off the back and putting in a new back if you've got one preloaded or loading the one you've already got. So I'm going to take this back off now because I've finished, I only had a few shots on this to finish up and then I'll put my other back in which is loaded with some egg for APX100 black and white film and so I'll keep shooting with that. Okay, well, there was a slight hiccup in that um, I thought that I had black and white APX100 loaded in my second film back, but actually when I started winding it on, nothing was happening, and I realised quite quickly that there was actually no film in there. There was a, a, little, um, a little leaflet on the back that suggested that there was APX100 in the film body, but there wasn't any at all, so I've loaded it actually with some Kodak Ektar 100 color film and I'm going to be shooting this old uh, concrete bunker uh, it's got some quite nice uh, reds and blues and rusty browns and grey tones uh, and the lush dense green foliage of the bush so it actually is probably going to be a better shot in color and um, I'm just concentrating on the uh, concrete bunker itself so I've um, stopped opened up to 5.6 and that's giving me a 30th of a second shutter speed so now I'm on to shooting some color and Kodak Ektar which is a great film a lovely sharp um, beautiful tea grain structured film so I'll shoot some color now and we'll um, process that For my final shot of the day, I've got the camera in portrait orientation on the tripod and I'm taking a shot similar to the one that I took um, in the last vlog at the end at the lens challenge at 2.8 where I focused in on the, um, on the gorse bush and had the building blurred out in the background but this time I'm going to have everything sharp and I'm just going to have the building in the uh, top third and then the leading east curve of the river or the creek leading into it with the rocks and the boulders on either side so I'm shooting this at f22 and it's giving me a half a second shutter speed and that'll do a couple of things that'll um, give me that front to back sharpness that I need but it will also help me um, just blur out that water just a little bit um, not massively but just a little bit so last shot of the day f22 half a second and that'll do me from 10 mile creek this morning and I've had a fantastic morning I'm hoping fingers crossed that video has worked this time I'm pretty sure it has and so um, thanks for coming along with me this morning with my Bronica. It's not the last time that I'll use the Bronica. As I said, it's my favourite camera to shoot with. So I'll certainly be using it some more on these vlogs. Uh, so if you've enjoyed this content, please give me a thumbs up, uh, a like, and I'd really appreciate a subscribe. Uh, it'd be great to have you on board and uh, keep you informed with the vlogs that I do going forward in the future. So. Hi from New Zealand, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, bye.